everybody. Josh RV Nerd here at Bishop's RV of Coldwater, Michigan, uh, with an awesome update on the 19FBTH behind us over here. In orange, we call it a Rockwood. In green stripes, we call it a uh, E-Pro. They're the exact same thing. This is, uh, at a glance, another miniature ramper camper, but it's the big time devils in the details on this, like the fact that it has a built-in 12-volt air compressor and a uh, adjustable air ride suspension system, so you can always make sure this thing rides and handles nice behind you, no matter how you have it loaded, and that is not something you find in the industry every single day. Factory standard 190 watt roof solar package and 1000 watt inverter to all of the outlets. Um, there are, uh, you know, double ASDEL in the walls, which helps keep the weight down. It also helps with a little bit better thermal regulation. And really the whole signature calling card of this one is that you have a very flexible rear cargo loading or living space and then a, uh, a front full-time fixed bed. Uh, in a lot of miniature toy haulers, you still like have to fold down some benches and sleep on that. You don't have to deal with any of that here. You always have just a bed to crash at the end of the night. Now, what's really neat about this one is I could absolutely see this working for somebody who just wants to load like a kayak or some e-bikes. Not everything uh, has to be like, you know, dirt bikes and monster trucks, baby. Sometimes we're looking for something just a little bit smaller, a little bit simpler, a little bit easier. Like for instance, this has about a 3,400 pound dry rating. Maximum cargo, uh, she tops out at about 5,000 pounds. So if you have a tow rating above that, you should be able to handle this, which works where a lot of other tandem axle toy haulers just cannot possibly work. Let me know what you think about this thing, the areas where you think they nailed it, where they failed it. I'm gonna do my best to point out a couple of those as we go, make sure we give you that fair information. If that's what you like to see, make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave me a little comment if you're a returning viewer. Just say, hey, thanks for shooting me straight, pal. Nerd. Whatever. <laughs> well, now it seems it's time to step inside, so walk this way. You and me, babe. Hey, hey. Let's see if anybody can pick up that reference. That should be a fairly easy one, I think, for a lot of people here. I think a lot of people are about to go crank up their radios and pour some sugar on themselves. Regardless, what are we looking at here? Well, first of all, we're looking at a dimly lit camper because my dim idiot self forgot to light up the nice bright lights in this dimly lit camper. We will get there in just a moment. First and foremost though, um, this sofa over here can do a little bit of anything. So if you get yourself in trouble or if you're doing a little bit, uh, bit of buddy camping or sister camping or something like that, friend camping, maybe we've got a grandkid for the weekend, we got a neat little bonus space here for somebody to crash. Of course, you know, that always folds into a sofa. And I also had the bright idea to, you know, actually turn the lights on. But, you know, at the end of the day, you want to know what you load into this thing here. I don't always have this opportunity, and, like, everyone's like, you should include this measurement with all of your videos. Like, everyone has, like, a different measurement they always want me to include. I can't measure everything in every video. But I did get you some basic floor footage on this one. So, from the very back of the ramp, basically, up to that bathroom wall is about 79 to 80 inches. Now, if you're loading all the way up to the bed, you're going to gain uh, another 66 inches up in that area. So depending on what you're doing, you've got plenty of space in there. Now you might notice the location of the D-ring tie downs just to help you kind of picture how you're going to uh, move into this sucker. But something that's cool on these is it does have a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor. So if you wanna add another set of surface mounted D-rings, no big deal. You could put those pretty much anywhere you wanted. Right now they give you six. Now at the narrowest point between the wheel well to the uh, bathroom wall is about 39 inches. And then you're gaining around another 10 or 11 um, under that refrigerator space right there. Now those are floor measurements. Obviously there might be a couple other things sticking out, but hopefully that gives you a general idea. And if you need something a little more specific, well, give our team a call. We can have somebody come out, hand measure whatever you need, uh, or call the factory and get whatever you need. Now, it is nice here. We're ventless and we're carpetless, and it frustrates me that I have to point out ventless flooring belongs in a toy hauler. There's still a couple brands that seem to, to, to goof stupid that up every now and then, technical term. Um, all of the outlets, and that's an interesting place for outlets, and it looks weird. Like, why is there outlets on the wheel well? Well, it's right next to the sofa, so if you want to snake a phone charger through there, that's actually not too bad of a spot to be able to do that. Now, um, the ceiling height in here is, I think, very interesting the way they do this. Because if you were watching some kind of snake oil salesperson, what they would tell you is this has a six and a half foot tall interior. 
And that's not necessarily wrong, but that's not the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. This has a 6-1 sidewall, but it has a 5-inch vault. The roof is actually two 2.5-inch two laminated vaulted sections that effectively merge together, but where they merge together, it's an all-aluminum structure. More information on that and the construction of these available um, via the uh, Rockwood GeoPro factory tour that uh, I had the opportunity to record. Now, what we're looking at today, this has been built with the optional uh, propane oven. Uh, the standard there is just a big chunk of storage. Over here, I, oh, I always forget this. I, It's either 5.3 or 5.7 cubic foot um, 12 volt DC compressor fridge, uh, giving you that good cold storage capacity. Notice, <laughs> I like how they have a built-in six-pack rack right there. That's kind of nice. I uh, I used to have uh, a little bit of a six-pack rack on my belly, but now I've just got a Molson muscle. But when I had the six-pack rack, I was also about six years old, and then I discovered food. Anyway, uh, your charge controller, standard on this because we have a factory standard solar package, 190 watt base. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Ooh. One of the other things, uh, I'll probably forget to talk about this later, but this is one of the floor plans that is capable of accepting the uh, power package where you can go to 370 watts of factory solar, a 3000 watt inverter charging system uh, that, that could run like the air conditioner, could run anything. Look at that. Full shade in the entry door, baby. Rockwood doing Rockwood things. And this is definitely not an entertainment focused floor plan. Like from the sofa, yeah, you're really not watching TV. It could pivot around if you really wanted to, like if you wanted to put a patio chair on the floor uh, behind you over there, like like for instance. If you wanted to come back here and do your own little nerd yoga studio, this gives you plenty of floor space to do things like the nosy faced nerd pose back here. And did you notice there is also a magnetic screen wall back there? And if you kick your feet like this, it's absolutely adorable. So while you're over here doing the nosy face nerd adorable kick maneuver, um, you could have that TV facing toward you. Like maybe you pop in a little DVD so you've got an instructor giving you a guide helping you keep centered or whatnot. Or maybe you're putting in Predator and you're, you're, you're like, get to the chopper, you know, on a rainy day because this is a uh, 12 volt TV DVD combo. So it's going to work in the parks or out of the parks. Now, if you do have access to uh, local Wi-Fi, you can rebroadcast that across your campsite with the Wi-Fi Ranger. And that is that little switch on the right-hand side, just to the right of the uh, uh, stereo there. Now, this bed is, um, I believe, oh, I have to double check this. Hold on. Sorry, I wanted to double check as long as I got a tape measure on me. That is a 54 by 74 bed. So it's more on the size of a full size than a queen. Now, if you are a newlywed couple, that probably will be less of an issue. If you've been together a little bit longer, that might be a bit of a problem. I will tell you there is an opportunity to put an 80-inch uh, long bed on here. There's not room to put a wider bed in this thing, though, because it goes basically from wall to wall. So if you wanted a longer bed, what you'd have to do is remove this headboard. It's not hard, but if you do that, keep in mind, you're going to be sacrificing the Alice in Wonderland push me, pull me, eat me, uh, drink me, pop up power tower right there. And I think I forgot to mention previously, you do have those nice blackout roller shades in this thing, which I think is pretty cool. Now, uh, one step behind us over here, by, by the way, that's the uh, uh, control switch for a little uh, inverter you know, in case you need to power into the outlets up. This does not have a big bathroom. It does have a full dry bath though, where, you know, the toilet, the shower, and a sink. You don't have to wash your hands, uh, you know, your bathroom hands in the kitchen sink on this one. They are all kind of packed up into one room. One of the nice things here, though, is it does have that, uh, that big XL vent fan to really push and pull and breathe a lot of air through this thing. Now, as you saw, there was enough space for me in here. It wasn't exactly the biggest thing that I've ever seen. It was sufficient. And um, I think that's at best what you can say for the shower headroom in this if you're over six foot like me. Uh, doing a little mime routine, as you saw, it's sufficient if I stand with my head in the bubble. Um, but at the same time, the tallest part of the ceiling uh, is also where the shower head is located. So it kind of makes sense. And even though it's a little bit small, it generally works. And the, uh, the shower miser there, as I like to say, well, that's like Maxwell House, folks. She's good till the last drop. 
Now, something I try to do is uh, I really watch the comments that you folks leave. There's a reason I ask you all those questions. I'm also looking for, you know, are there questions I can proactively answer for you? And one of the questions I think a lot of people are going to ask is, can you get a ramp patio on the back of this one? And the answer to that, unfortunately, is I wish. And the answer is not yes. Interestingly, the Cherokee Wolf Pup, very similar sized and laid out floor plan, it does have a ramp patio feature on it. Unfortunately, the uh, Flagwoods, as it were, do not. Um, do you think that's a miss? Is that a deal breaker? If it had one, would you buy it? If it doesn't have one, would you not buy it? That kind of insight. Or would it just be maybe a neat thing to have? Um, I don't know if that's something that we could aftermarket upfit for you here because I don't know exactly how it's structured. So if you're curious about that, leave me a comment. Maybe I can find out and I'm going to sneeze. And these technical sniffaculties brought to you by Applebee's, eating good in the neighborhood. Um, so it doesn't have a ramp patio. For me, a bummer. Maybe some people don't care. If you don't care, if you're like, I don't care, let me know, let me know. I do like that they're including a ramp transition flap, and I don't understand why more builders in the RV industry have stopped doing that. So many of them used to, why don't they still? It, it, it just doesn't exactly make a ton of sense to me. Now you saw in our early floor plan in the flash footage, and I mentioned it on the inside, you have that portable picnic table right there. You know, if you use it inside, it absolutely bosses up the space and it pretty much cuts the camper off from being walked through the way that that bathroom wall kind of uh, intrudes. However, it's free floating. You don't have to leave it there. You can fold it up and leave it on the bed during the day when you're not using it. Bring it out here for your little grilling and chilling time. You've got the uh, factory included griddle station here with the propane cooker hooker down below. And this does have some nice outside storage that we're going to look at in just a second. But notice how they're still giving us a place over there uh, to keep the stinky slinky uh, away from all of our patio and picnic and hitching stuff. Now this is very cool. I mentioned how this RV has a, uh, a built-in air compressor. It includes a little remote control over here where you can um, basically pre-program in well actually you can uh, control the left and the right airbags separately um, so you know if you have a big heavy motorcycle loaded down one side and not the other you can adjust the ride and handling of this RV uh, to, to fit your needs on a per trip basis not to mention the fact the built-in air compressor on board can, like I said, be used to inflate things like tires, uh, whether it's the RV or something else. Now, neat little thing here. You see where it says recommended zone. You don't have to be a genius. You don't have to like try to figure, okay, well, how do I blah, blah, blah. All you have to do is just hit the inflate button until that little arrow goes in the green once it's loaded. So you load the RV, then you adjust the suspension, and then you ride down the road. And I've talked to the RV delivery drivers on these, and they say, buddy, this thing handles like a dream. You may have also noticed that little black, or that little plastic packaging there uh, next to the tire. That is the TST, yeah, you know me, tire pressure monitoring system that comes included standard with all of these. Now let's talk about Asdell because this RV uses double of it, and it always has. Uh, GeoPro, EPro, Rock Staves, um, they're, they're double as a, basically almost anything on this that is laminated is using Asdell. And if, if you're not familiar with Asdell, it's a composite material. It takes the place of, uh, you know, Luan wood paneling um, within the, uh, the lamination sandwich, the lamb-witch, if you will, uh, of the RV. It reduces weight, it reduces um, heat from the sun. It reduces noise from the outside. It's a little more expensive component though, but it's just a, another case of Rockwood doing Rockwood things, which is exactly what we're looking at right here. Some brands, they give you the little foot pad. Some brands give you a wheel. Flagwood says, bet, I'll do both. I'll do better. Where they do or, I'll do and, and I'll be that much better. That's what this brand is. But that's also the greatest liability. They never know when just enough is just enough. They're always trying to do a little bit more. And you know what? They're doing a very good job of it because uh, last year uh, they were a, a, a gold rank winner of the DSI uh, Quality Awards that went out there. And that is um, you know, basically as voted and commented upon by actual owners. So that's not just Somebody thought it'd be neat to give them an award. They had to earn that from the, the people who actually buy these things and use them all the time. 
Uh, 12 volt tank heaters have become a standard object on these, which I think is very, very exciting. And with the, uh, the, the bigger tire package standard, notice that you've got some pretty decent ground clearance uh, above your sewer outlet right there, which I don't know, I think that's pretty nice. And it's a single sewer outlet where you don't have to worry about things being mixed in, around, and upside down in every which way in between. It all just kind of makes sense and works together here. Now, I feel like I'm forgetting, oh yeah, Pfft. what am I forgetting? All of the crap on the roof. Let me see if, let me see if I can get up there because this is unfortunately with the rear ramp door, one of the only Flagwood EOG pros that um, <laughs> doesn't have a ladder on the back, technical term by the way. Uh, up top here, we got that big Max Air vent fan cover for that big old Taco Tuesday fart fan in the bathroom. Now that is good not just for Taco Tuesdays, but if uh, you are dry camping where you're not going to necessarily be able to run that air conditioner, you can get a sweet breeze rolling through this RV all the time, which is very handy at night because the cool frameless windows on this RV, they look smexy. They also don't get the best airflow. But again, that's that real world information that I want to give you here. Now, um, you might notice behind my fat head over here, we've got the 190 watt factory solar panel. You can double that from the factory if you want, or we could add the upfit for you. Um, also, real quick housekeeping note. I noticed that this RV has the bigger air conditioner on top in terms of physical size. It will always be the same power. Um, normally, when you look at one of these, uh, they will have a low profile air conditioner that actually sits down below the Max Air vent fan cover. So typically, the, the highest measurement on this is actually the top of that vent fan cover. Um, sometimes, apparently, those can be hard to come by from the factory suppliers. Sometimes they do need to resort to using the bigger air conditioners. So I, I really just want to put that in your head where if you're really worried about overhead clearance, um, before, like, because a lot of people are buying RVs remotely just over the internet right now because they listen to goofballs like me. Thank you very much, by the way. Very, uh, very humbling. But um, I, I want you to know you, you should ask your sales contact, whether it's Bish's RV or anywhere. I don't care. Put us to the test, just like anybody else. Ask them what air conditioner is on the top and what is the true total maximum point on the RV uh, because it can vary a little bit. And unfortunately, I don't have factory specs for what that big air conditioner uh, will, will do in terms of total height. Now, I've made no secret about the fact that, you know, some places like the shower are a little smaller. Um, similarly, the, the opening to the ramp door here, uh, if I just walk straight at that, I'm gonna about cold cock myself on that steel frame right there. So, you know, there's little things you gotta keep in mind, but I think when you're in a small camper, that kind of goes with the territory to make sense. I don't think we have to overthink that too much. Um, I will leave you some links in the video description. One to check for pricing and availability on this or the green stripe Flagstaff version because this one video covers both campers equally. They're the exact same thing. I'll try to remember to leave you a link to the E-Pro and Geo-Pro factory tour. I'll, I'll leave you some links to some, maybe you're looking for something uh, a little bit lower budget. I got something for you. Uh, if you're looking for something tandem axles, I got some options for you too. So I got all kinds of things there for you to check out. And again, I welcome your input. I've given you everything that I really have to say about this one for today. So I'm gonna go get hydrated. My electrolyte count feels like it's getting low. <laughs> but I'll take it over that snowy, just w a rainy crap that we've had recently here. This is beautiful. This is a glorious gift and I absolutely love it. Um, the camper ain't bad either. <laughs> so take care, stay safe, have fun. And best wishes from Vicious, everyone. Happy camping. Bye.